You know, people started out calling this illness ME, and that was the British many years ago. Um, and there's been a regression back to CFS in 1988 with um, people from the CDC and the US. Um, I think there's been a movement to change that. Um, and actually, um, some people are calling it ME-CFS as a transition term. But I ultimately think this illness would be called ME, for mild encephalomyelitis. I think that's the legitimate name for this illness. In a sense, it got hijacked um, 30 years ago, and it needs to revert back to that original name. The name CFS is a terrible term that was come up with by the CFS, by the CDC um, many years ago in 1988. Um, you know, if you think about um, someone who was coughing and you said that that was chronic cough syndrome, um, people would say, who cares? Everybody coughs. It just isn't a big thing. However, if we basically called it bronchitis or emphysema, people would say, gee, that really sounds like it's a significant issue. So the name counts. And you can't have a name for an illness that trivializes a condition. And fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome is one of those names that ultimately has to change. Um, our group actually did some research where we looked at attributions and we put the name ME and we gave a case description and then we gave the name CFS and then we gave the term Florence Nightingale disease. And we had the same case study and we found that names do make attributions and they do significantly differ how one thinks about those cases. And we actually did this research with medical interns as well as psychology undergraduates, and we found attributions do get changed based on the terms that are used to describe cases. The CDC criteria is often thought of as the FACUDA 1994 criteria. This was put together by a consensus of people, and I think consensus-based case definitions have problems. In specific, by having four symptoms required out of eight possible ones, you can miss some of the cardinal symptoms of this illness. So for example, the three cardinal symptoms are post-exertional malaise, memory and concentration problems, and on refreshing sleep. Well, if you can believe it, a person could have four other symptoms and not have these three cardinal symptoms and still get the term CFS. That's a major problem with an illness category when the cardinal features of the illness are not required to be diagnosed. Our group actually looks at several criteria and tries to basically have people fill out a questionnaire. Um, and then we actually look at how a person meets the criteria for the 1994 FACUDA criteria, how they meet the criteria for the MEICC, the new 2011 criteria, as well as the Canadian MECFS criteria. So we try to compare and contrast those three. But I must say, um, there's limitations with all three, and that really consensus-based efforts are probably not the best way for us to come up with the best ways of characterizing this illness. The IACFSME um, put out a primer that basically used the Canadian consensus criteria of 2003. And we felt that there had been a um, good amount of research that at least had suggested that this particular case definition um, selected a smaller group of patients that had more functional impairment. So we decided to really focus our primer around a case definition that had been around for 10 years that most importantly specified core cardinal symptoms, post-exertional malaise, memory concentration problems, as well as sleep difficulties. So that's why we decided to kind of write a primer and focus it around something, a case definition that we thought was an improvement of the FACUDA 1994 criteria. In fact, there was another case definition, MEICC, that did come out um, in 2011 and 2012. 
Um, but there hasn't been as much research done on that particular case definition. So we decided to use the one that had a little bit more um, been used by kind of research community. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.